It's Tuesday, September 30th, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. Mass graves have been discovered near Ukraine's embattled eastern city of Donetsk. A group of pro-Russia rebels claim they found the decomposing corpses of four fellow separatists and a mine worker. The men all had their hands tied and internal organs removed, and some of them had been decapitated. A medical examiner confirmed they were each shot multiple times in the head and body. The rebels say there are likely dozens more bodies buried in the area, and that Ukrainian troops are to blame. An oil spill in central Chile is threatening the wildlife and local fishing industry. Some 800 gallons of crude leaked from a state-run tanker in the coastal Quintero region on Thursday. Residents and fishermen have pitched in to help rescue penguins and birds covered in sludge, and the government has sent 700 people to handle cleanup operations. Environmental experts are investigating the cause of the spill, and if there's any legal recourse. Venezuela's government is using a new fingerprinting system to monitor customers at six state-run supermarkets across the country. Officials say it will help stop smugglers and hoarders from stocking up on the limited number of subsidized goods, a consequence of soaring inflation rates and a decade and a half of currency controls which have caused major food and supply shortages. Some economists say the measure won't be effective in remedying the problem and that the scans invade privacy. Members of a radical Muslim organization have gone on trial in Belgium on terrorism charges. Prosecutors are accusing the group Sharia for Belgium of brainwashing and sending young Muslims to join militant groups in Syria. Fifteen of the 46 defendants are being charged with leading a terrorist organization. Only eight of them were present at the trial's opening on Monday, while many others are believed to be fighting or have died fighting in Syria. The group announced it was disbanding two years ago, but authorities believe it continued to operate and recruit fighters, and that the ones who return could be trained to launch attacks on Belgian soil. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world. For me, I'm not afraid. I'm working for my country. I'm working for my people to save lives. These guys are worth they're, they're heroes. You know, they're, they're taking every risk they can. They're aware of the dangers. They're not ignorant about it. 20 cases yesterday, 40 cases today, and you know that tomorrow it's going to be 70. These are real people with real stories and, and real lives. <laughs>